we've hit the top of the hour, so I think for time's sake, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start with just some introductions and some housekeeping items before we get started. Um, welcome to our design innovation webinar today for drawing tips for productivity. Um, just like I mentioned, some housekeeping items. I have muted everybody on entry. That is because we're going to be recording this webinar today. So we will be hosting these on our YouTube channel. We try to host about two webcasts a day during our Design Innovation Month for the month of October. So go ahead and check out the schedule and visit some of our other webcasts uh, for the month of October. So um, I will be monitoring the chat. I will be your host today. My name is Jordan Puentes. I am an application engineer out of our Portland, Oregon office. So I'll monitor the chat if you guys have questions during. Um, but like I mentioned, please keep yourselves muted just because we will be recording this webinar today. So with that, I'll go ahead and introduce our presenter. Ryan Field is going to be presenting for us today. He is an application engineer out of our Cleveland, Ohio office. So go ahead and take it away, Ryan. All right, thank you for the introduction, Jordan. Um, yep, so as Jordan said, this is some drawing tips uh, for just product, everyday productivity and we'll work with our drawings. As you mentioned, um, uh, application engineer you can see here based out of our Cleveland, Ohio office. Uh, so, why are we talking about this, this topic here today, right? We we do drawings, right, to relay that information uh, for how our parts, for how our assemblies are made, or just, you know, those, those finished products, right? And a lot of time goes into creating those, uh, you know, whether it be like a simple part, right, like we, we see here, right, or, you know, maybe something sometimes they get a lot, or can get a lot more complex than that, right? So being able to be just more efficient when creating those drawings, which we're, where we're spending a lot of time, able to get across the information that we do need to get across, right? The more we can do that, the better off um, we're going to be. Uh, so today, um, I wanted to talk about that through really three main topics um, that we're going to go through here. First um, is just starting off with some basics, kind of getting started there uh, with creating, we're creating um, our drawing and some um, efficiency tools that we can see there. Um, next, right, those different views that we can create. There's a lot of different views we can create in SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to look at uh, a few of those. Um, those different view types and see how we can, can create those and what they can do for us. Um, and then lastly, just kind of want to get into a few just tips and tricks, right? Some things that we can use every day to kind of help help with our productivity when, when making our drawings and dimensioning and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go ahead in and just start off with the top there, right? With, um, you know, creating a drawing, right? I'm sure, you know, everyone here creates drawings and you kind of know how to do that, but want to look at some of those tools and a lot of these maybe you, a lot of people have maybe seen, um, but hopefully everyone can pick up a, a few things here within this section kind of uh, as we're going through. And as you can see here, just a bunch of different options, right? We have in our some system options we can set um, and within the view, different view options we have. And then once we get into, you know, getting there and annotating dimension and some of the things we can do with, with dimensions there. Okay, so let's jump over here into SOLIDWORKS and we have our part, right? You can see we have it modeled up. Um, and before we go ahead in and start our drawing, let's go into our system options and look at some of those things where we can like kind of set some standards for ourselves, right, within our within our system, right? Things like our display style, how we want to view those those views, and then like some kind of like the tangent edges. How are we going to see those? How are we going to view those? So once we set those for our system, right, we can go out and grab our you know our template uh, that we want to use uh, to create that uh, drawing. And it opens up, right, we have our, our view palette over here, right, we have all of our standard, standard views. We have some of those other options up at the top that we can see, like importing annotations, right, we can bring in those design annotations directly from the model if they, that manufacturing intent lines up and we can help that or use that. Uh, but the big one there is that auto start projected view, right. So we'll go ahead and just grab a view and bring it in. And again, this is really, you know, another kind of thing to talk about is right, bringing that in, creating our model, right, with the views the right way so that we can um, they align with those view uh, layouts there. So I bring that in, that auto projection, I bring in my front view and I can go ahead and quickly just create my uh, top and right view there. And real quickly, we'll just go ahead and bring in an isometric view uh, and then get into some of these view options, right? So maybe an isometric view, we won't want to, want to see that um, differently than we see those other views. We want to change some of those view options here. So we can come over to the options for that view and change things like the scale or here we'll show it with shaded with edges, right, for that um, isometric view. You do that with multiple views as well. I'm just going to control select these two views here and maybe change, you know, some other settings like those tangent edges that we had, how we had it set there, right? We can go ahead and change that to um, something else. 
Um, and then we'll remove those and then go ahead and show um, hidden edges, right? So we can see those on our, on our views. So we got the views sort of set up how we want them now. We then can go in and start dimensioning. We have a few different things we can use, right? We have our smart dimensions. We can go in and, you know, start dimensioning that up. Or we can bring in those model items directly from the model, right? If our manufacturing intent lines up with our design intent here. So we can just choose, you know, to do that for the whole model. And then what do we want to bring over? Dimensions marked for drawing, um, system option, or uh, whole wizard stuff, uh, you know, different annotations we can bring in. And, so, and the drawing gets populated, right, with all those, those annotations. And they might not quite line up exactly how we want those there. So we can, we have a nice tool to kind of go in and help, uh, help us position those. So I'm going to be safe here and go ahead and grab, uh, hit F5, uh, quick key there to get the filters and grab our dimension um, fil uh, filter and select all of the um, dimensions for that view. So um, what I want to do is just kind of auto space those. So I select all those and we get that little pop up there on that dimension palette. And when we do that, a lot of options which we'll get into here in a minute. But we have multiple dimensions selected, right? We can auto arrange those dimensions where it nice and quickly and easily can kind of position those for us. I'm gonna do that again for this bottom view or the front view. And right, if you accidentally move too far and it goes away, you actually don't have to reselect it. You can just deselect and reselect. We can hit control um, and bring that auto arrange option back, or that view dimension palette back up and we can go ahead and, and select those. All right, so turn off my filter here. Uh, let's go ahead up now and kind of do a, a combination of right, those model items and, and smart dimensions. Let's add um, some of our own dimensions in. Instead of going up to the command manager, I'm going to use the S key, right, that customizable toolbar that can pop up. And I'm hitting S on um, the shortcut toolbar to access our um, dimension. So we can go ahead and put the vertical dimension for that hole there. And you can see we're going to get this uh, rapid dimension selector that pops up. Uh, looks like the little pie there where it kind of helps us position those dimensions and also can automatically space those existing dimensions as well. So you saw that 40 kind of pop out so we don't have to go in and kind of do that on our own. So a nice way to kind of position all those dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and add another dimension down here. And this time, right, as we place one dimension, we can go back up into that dimension palette and sort of access to a lot of the stuff available over in the property manager there, right? And we can add, you know, the brackets if we want, a parentheses, or we can go in, maybe this is just a reference dimension. I can add a note. As we see, as we type that in, we can see that dimension. We can see it over there in the property manager um, as well for that dimension. I select on it, let's go back in, right? Other things are available there, like our tolerances. We can set up the tolerances um, through this dimension palette um, really easily. Um, you can see that update um, right there for us. So this is really nice because we, you know, voids or minimizes our mouse travel, right? We don't have to go over into the feature manager and make our selections and come back. We kind of access all of that stuff right there so we can focus on our design instead of moving all around the screen. All right, next we want to maybe move some dimensions around, right? Some dimensions are on a view that we don't want, um, want them. We want to move those to a different view. Instead of deleting and, and recreating those, we can move them, right, by um, shift and dragging the dimension to over to the view that we want to place it on, we can drop that on and move that dimension over there. You can see we've removed that 10 from that top view over to the right. Um, if you want, uh, if you want to have the same dimension twice, uh, you can, right? We can actually just control um, and drag. What this is going to do is just copy that dimension and we can have that dimension on both views there. We can copy that over with, with a control drag. Go ahead and add one more dimension on here. Um, just kind of finish, finish that off. And one last thing to talk about here is, is our alignment. So I'm going to go ahead in and put a, um, let's create a section view. Um, right, we can go um, up into our property manager over to our view layout tab and select that. But I'm going to look at another uh, tool called the mouse gestures in order to do that. Right, this is another customizable tool, right? We just right click and hold down and just move the mouse and we can, you know, customize that for different um, tools that we can add on there and quickly access. So I'm going to add a section view and we can see it's, uh, it's aligned for us there. But we don't want it to be aligned, right? On the fly, we can hold down control and break that alignment on the fly. So we can place that dimension or place that view somewhere else. See, it's free free to move all the way around, you know, all around. Uh, doesn't have, it's not aligned to that view anymore. Uh, we can go ahead and actually break that um, after the fact too, right? Just right clicking on the view and alignment, break alignment. We can also re-add alignment if we want to. Uh, we can do that a few different ways, right? We can go in, we have uh, horizontally or vertically by origin or by center, uh, we can add those in. I'm gonna go ahead and 
click horizontal um, origin, select on that view, and now we've aligned that uh, view um, with another view there. Okay, so just some tools, again, a lot of those um, may be review for some people, but hopefully everyone grabbed a couple things there, right? Within our system options, we can set things up so we don't have to change those every time we can set them up how we, you know, want to view those within our system options, um, your preferences that you want. Uh, within the view palette, right, we can automatically go into projected view mode to quickly create those model views, or we can bring those annotations on creation um, through that. Uh, within view options, right, how do we want to view those, right? For the different views, we can change things like scale and style, right? We can break alignment as we're creating those views or, you know, add on the fly or, add, or after the fact and realign. Um, and a lot of nice things with that in the dimensioning um, options, right? Utilizing the model items um, if they, they can work out for us or utilizing, you know, a combination of that and smart dimensions or, you know, what, however you want to create those. But we have that, those tools, right? The dimension palette, the rapid dimensioning to kind of help um, define all that stuff right there, um, right there in front of us instead of moving all around, uh, create, doing a lot, a lot of mouse travel and moving around. All right, so now that we've got that, let's start talking about some of the different view options we have. There's a lot of views um, that we can create that are maybe just not those standard views there, but let's go ahead in and um, look at a few of those here. Talk about some predefined views, uh, maybe those ones we just created, if that's sort of like a standard, right, we can use predefined views and add those um, to automatically populate those. And we'll talk about a relative view if we need to create some custom view, and a really cool one, um, newer, I think 2019, I was added in that removed section view. And then um, 3D views, right? If you're creating those utilizing SOLIDWORKS MVD or DIM Expert, right? We can add those into a drawing as well. All right. So first off, right, like that drawing we had before, right? We want to create that those. That's a standard sort of setup that we want to create. We want to have those views, so we can build those predefined views in if we want. So we start off really just by creating a or opening up a template. And I'm going to come up here to this tool I use all the time, this search command, search tool. I'm going to select commands and just start typing in what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm going to use this predefined view. Right? I can click on it there. I can click that eyeball. And actually, I'm not, you know, don't I, you don't move the mouse, and it actually will show you exactly where that tool is, um, where that feature is. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select um, a predefined view and drop one on there and set some options there. We'll want it to be a front view. Let's go ahead and, and choose our display style. We'll use the sheet scale, and we'll just rename this our front view here. Then I'm going to click on the view, and with our context menu that pops up, go right into um, projected view mode, and we're going to create a top and a right view here. We're creating these, um, putting in these predefined views, projected views off of that predefined view, and we'll rename Rename these as well. Optionally, we don't have to rename these, but I'll just call this the top, our standard top and right views here. And lastly, just like on our last drawing, right, we want to have that isometric view. So I'm going to just type that in again, and I can just click it right there. I don't have to go see where it's at buried at in the, the menus over there. And I'll just drop that view in. And this time, let's switch it to an isometric view. And what do we like with those isometric views? Let's show those um, shaded with edges. And I'll click that one and drop that in. All right, we'll rename that isometric, and then basically we're done, right? We just used that other template and added some predefined views in it, created that new drawing. Now let's save this out as another template. I'm just going to do a save as and change this to a drawing template here. And we'll point this out to a location where we have our templates, you know, usually not in the standard location if you're creating these custom templates. And, um, you know, usually give it a descriptive you know, name here. Um, this was I think, based off of that B size, but we'll just, for the point of this, just give it a um, easy to find. We'll just call this our predefined view for, for our webinar here, so we can e easily find and, and see that this is the view we, uh, the template we created. All right, so we have this new drawing template, and let's test it out. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead in and use this home toolbar, which is a really nice way to go access um, recently used files. And we'll open up that same part we started before that we were looking at earlier. And I'm going to go make a drawing from this part. And we'll go over to our new our tab there. We have that predefined view. And right when we select this view, um, let's click that again here. When we click on this, there we go. 
We click on this view and open it up, automatically populated with those views that we defined in there. And now we're a few steps into it already where we can go and now start doing our dimensions. So if it's standardized, you know, template, right, we can build that in standardized views, we can build that into a template with those predefined views. Um, another way we can do it is if you just open this up, we can do it right from opening up a blank template um, drawing here using that template. I go ahead first and just change the scale. And we'll change that to one to two. And then when I click on a view over there in the property manager, we can just insert a model as our open one or we can browse out there and enter that in. I just do my quick rebuild. Right, and you see we have populated the that front view as well as its projected views there. Another way we can do it, we'll just right click um, and on the view itself and enter in the um, the model that way there for our isometric view, and it's got the shaded with edges and everything already. So, right, if we have, want to standardize, right, we have that predefined views um, that we can use and build into a template. All right, our next uh, view type we're going to look at here is what's called a relative view. Um, so this is maybe we want to open up our um, a new drawing here really quick. So this is maybe we want to create um, a custom view that's not one of the standard views um, within our model, right? If we look at this kind of um, turn part here, maybe we want to focus in on that little cut that's on there, that little cutout. Um, that's on that side there. But if we look at that view and we look at the asymmetric view, that's not, you know, one of our standard views. So we can go in and create what's called a relative view. I'm going to right-click right on the view there and choose Drawing Views. There's actually predefined there. And I'm going to choose Relative View. And what it's going to do is bring us out into the part file where we can choose the orientations that we want. So we'll choose our first and our second orientation, right? We can choose the front, but we actually um, have some different options, right? We can choose what our first orientation is. I'll choose that front face there. And then for our second orientation, choose the orientation and then the face. And brings us back into the drawing and gives us our, um, our new relative view that we've created where we can go in and you know, do what we need to do, crop that or do create a crop view or do what we need to do um, with that view there. Uh, but now we're kind of have the orientation that we're, lo that we're looking for. All right, our next view uh, we want to look at here is it's called the removed section view. Um, this was um, a nice way, or this is a nice way to kind of create slices of the model as we, um, at different locations along, along, the, um, along the drawing. All right, so here we open up this bottle and you can see we've got like a circular neck that transitions down into a square body there. Um, so we want to look at some different sections along that. Along that. So on our view layout tab, I'm going to grab the remove section tool and we get some options really just to choose an edge and then an opposing edge. I'm going to go ahead in and pick this silhouette edge of the um, circular um, cross section there. Then that opposing edge, silhouette edge, and just place it where I want to have it. And we get that sliced, nice sliced section view that kind of comes off, off from that. That's aligned there. We um, can quickly and easily get that um, slice section there. We'll do it again down here in the square, where you can see we can also automatically place it. You can manually place it if maybe you want to have to find sort of that at an angle or something like that. We can position it that way as well. So we can quickly and easily get those nice, clean looking um, sliced section views uh, with the removed section option there, which is a really nice tool that was added um, recently. All right, and the last uh, one we want to look at here is. Um, using 3D views um, and create, putting those on a drawing. Um, so this is for anyone out there that may be thinking about it or maybe using Dim Expert and SolidWorks MBD to put all that PMI information directly um, on the model. Right, you can see uh, within the model we have all of our information there. Right, we have those different view, 3D views you can see we can create with SolidWorks MBD right, that um, orients and creates, uh, organizes all of that information for us on those different views. Now, we, if you still need a 2D drawing uh, to be your, your output or your end deliverable, um, we can do that um, quickly just by creating a template or grabbing our template. And if we have 3D views already defined in the model, it'll show up there in the view palette. 
We can also just import right annotations. We can bring in DIM expert annotations. We click that and bring in, uh, start dragging in those 3D views, and we can quickly and easily bring in that PMI information from the model um, into a drawing if, if we need to have that um, 2D deliverable so quickly and easily. All right, so the different, a lot of different views, again, that we have here, but the few uh, we talked about, right, predefined views, right? If you want to, we have those standard, standardized views, uh, we can build those into, um, use predefined views and build those into a template to quickly and easily get those um, on a drawing. Um, that can also be used in conjunction with task scheduler to help speed that process up. Um, the relative view option, right, uh, to get that a custom view um, or orientation, right, we can't quite get that. Um, from the model itself, right? This is useful for like the weldments, right? With multi-body parts, right? If we want to um, dimension or define, you know, one of those one of those bodies. Um, remove section view, just quickly getting that slice, right? At different locations along the drawing view, um, right? Just option cuts normal to the um, to a pair of those parallel lines there, or if we have the non-parallel lines, you can see it's uh, or normal to one of the non-parallel lines. And lastly, right, if you're utilizing DIM Expert or and SOLIDWORKS MBD or you want to, right, we can still leverage that information and still create um, sort of that transition there. I still want to use, still need to get a 2D drawing, right? We can add that information directly to those 3D views uh, directly to a drawing. All right. Lastly, let's go ahead and jump in and look at a few uh, just tips and tricks when we're in, we're in the drawing here. There's a couple of things that we'll talk about that we can see on the screen there, but let's go ahead and just jump in and, and look at those real quick. So first off, uh, we have this you know, relatively simple drawing here, right? We just have a, a view, right? If you want to move a view around, right, you have to click on the view edge, right? We can move that around or click on the model edge to move that around. But if you kind of click anywhere else or miss that, it's hard to move around. Just by hitting, holding the Alt key, right, we can um, just grab a view anywhere and move that around. Just um, saves a little heartache, right, just trying to grab in specific areas. You can just Alt, alt and move those around. Next one here is let's go ahead and just put a, a, another dimension in. Maybe we have a drawing with a lot of dimensions where the lines are crossing, right, and we want it to look a little cleaner, right? We want to break those lines there. Um, we can do that by going over to the Leaders tab of the dimension um, and choosing break line or checking on break lines there. You can see it kind of gives us that nice little break over those other dimension lines. Now, if it doesn't um, do that, there is one other place we can go and look. If we go out here into our document properties for the dimensions, right, you see there's a checkbox over here that it would maybe be checked on right, for break only around dimension arrows, which um, does just that. Right, so we move that around, you can see it's sort of just um, not breaking over those dimension lines. So we go back out here and turn that off um, or uncheck that again. You can see we can set the uh, tolerance or the, not tolerance, but the size of that gap there. And inevitably, right, we have to move dimensions around. So if we move it around and it's crossing over another line and it doesn't um, show up, right, we can just go back in and basically just toggle that off and on, that break lines option, and kind of get that nice break line clear clear looking option there, or clear dimension line. All right, our next one, we want to dimension to uh, our virtual sharp, right? How can we do that, right? So within the uh, dimension tool, just going to right click and choose find intersection. So I click my first edge, um, choose find intersection, and I'll grab my other edge, and we get um, the virtual sharp that shows up there, and we can just go in and, and create the dimension from that where we want it. So a quick and easy way to create that. Next, uh, let's look at a few angle dimension tools um, that we can do. So first off, I'm going to click and place this dimension here. And with the um, that rapid dimension selector, right, we can easily kind of get the one that we want. But let's say we already have a dimension there, and we want essentially the 360 degree minus that dimension, right? And bonus points for anyone that knows, that's called an explementary dimension. Um, we can view that uh, through our display options here. We'll click on dimension, get the explementary angle, and we can get that essentially 
that opposite, opposite dimension there, or that exponentiary dimension of that. I'm going to flip that back. Um, so I want to look at another option in there, another display option in there, right? If we want what's called the um, vertically opposite angle. If I check that, um, right, we can get the angle sort of going off the, um, sort of that invisible line there, showing that vertically opposite of that one. And speaking of a dimension like that, uh, if we do want to create a dimension to like a um, imaginary horizontal or vertical line there, we can do that by selecting the line and then picking that like collinear vertex there and we get these crosshairs that pop up. We can select uh, which one we want and then we can go and create a dimension um, off of that. So it's a real time save where we're having to go and put in like uh, extra construction geometry or whatnot, we can do that um, with that, that crosshairs. And the last one I want to talk about is let's say some standardizations or for whatnot, you want to have all capitalized um, in notes or whatnot. Um, we have an option, we can click on it and just choose all uppercase and it can switch that as all to uppercase for us. Um, it remembers that, so if you click that and check it off, right, we can go back. Um, this is true in not only in our notes, but in our tables as well. Um, and also um, in 2020 in dimensions and whole callouts as well. You can set that as a property too, and you, um, if you want, right, to, for all uppercase, for notes, um, tables, and as I mentioned in 2020, uh, dimensions and whole callouts as well. All right, so just uh, recapping that, right, we can easily move our views around uh, with Alt to drag the views, um, define and measure uh, from our virtual sharps, um, clear up the, the drawing views uh, with break the dimension lines there. And then a few things within the angle dimensions like exponentiary angle, uh, vertically opposite, and then measuring to those um, horizontal and vertical, um, imaginary horizontal and, and verticals there. Um, and then all caps, right, if you need to kind of standardize on that and they, they're not uh, on the drawing, right, you don't have to recreate those. We have that option to turn that to all, all caps. Okay, uh, so just to sum up uh, really quickly, right, we just saw some basics there with, with getting started. Um, so different options we have within the system options and um, the view options and dimension options and uh, creating our, our views there, um, our standard views and, and putting on the dimensions. And then some of the other um, custom um, view types that we can create, like we can do use those predefined views to build those into um, a template or real, create that custom view with a relative view there, that newer, remove section to get the nice um, sliced uh, cross section along the different locations on the drawing. Um, and if you are using MBD, SOLIDWORKS MBD and DIM Expert, right, we can put those on 2G drawing if that's, if that's required. And then lastly, right, just some, some nice things within, dimension, uh, within the drawing for like dimensioning, like different things with the angles, um, measuring the virtual sharps and moving, moving um, the views around. Okay, um, so that's kind of all I had for, for us today here. Um, hopefully everyone uh, was able to pick up a, a thing or two at least.